Like the concept of like a guy in the sky, uh, you know, with a robe on, like what people consider God, that mm -hmm. seem, might p seem ridiculous, but the idea that there's a powerful force of the universe, like, why wouldn't there be? Like, how else did this happen? Even if that powerful force is just some scientific creation machine. 99% of Christians are ignoring every single rule inside the Bible Can every Christians single day. Christians interpret the Bible, you're saying? Like, they like pick and choose what they want to Oh, yeah, stick they'll, they'll, with, yeah they'll try and say, I interpret it differently. I believe in God, but, you know, I don't believe in that part. That, uh, that's not what the book says. It doesn't, seem to ignore, it doesn't say ignore half of me. It says follow me. No, yeah. Only Muslims follow their book. No. There's still a historical story, and so what you have in the figure of Christ is an actual person who actually lived, plus a myth, and in some sense, Christ is the union of those two things. The problem is, is I probably believe that, but I don't know, okay. I don't, I'm amazed at my own belief, and I don't understand it. Like, and so in some sense, I believe it's undeniable. Tell the boys, Harry. Went in. Good. Good afternoon, Newcastle. I hope you're well. Um, and as always, you know, we come out here to, to preach the word of God week in and week out. And that's what we're here to do. And a lot of people don't like that. Um, they say things like, don't force your religion on me. Don't come out here and bash me with your Bible. Um, trust me, not yet to do that, mate. Not at all. Um, I can't force you to do anything. You've got legs, you can walk, you've got fingers, you can put them in the ear. You know, even some Christians say, well, you shouldn't really preach it. You should just talk to people quietly about it. Listen, Jesus Christ himself said, go and proclaim the good news of the gospel. So that's what we're here to do. And the reason that it's good news is Newcastle is because there's hope, there's joy, and there's peace, sister that is found not in ourselves, so that's why I'm not telling you about me, and not in yourself, that's why I'm not telling you how great you are, but in the one true living God, who is Jesus Christ. And as you walk up and down this street here today, you're going to be given many options. We've got Buddhists down there, we've got Jehovah's Witnesses down there, we've got all sorts of stuff going on on this street. And everybody has truth claims, everybody claims to have the truth. Me here today, I'm claiming to be telling you the truth. But the question is, is it true? Is it true? Because what you see when you're on the streets a lot is a lot of brokenness, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. And that's not my angle to get you to listen. It's just seeing what the facts are. And this world is constantly pushing mental health awareness and mental health this and mental health that. And listen, I totally get it. My brother gets it. We get it. We get it. And there's no um, shortage of people who are here to give you advice and to try to give you life direction, especially in that sort of, in that avenue. No matter where you stand, if you're Jehovah's Witness or Hare Krishna or the atheist or even some of the Satanists that come and make themselves known every single week, there is a common denominator in humanity. And the truth of the matter is that all of us, deep down, I believe, just want to be satisfied and happy. You ask people what you want, you say, I just want to be happy. Now what that looks like to some people is different to others, but there is a remedy for the soul. But when everybody just wants to be happy, and everybody's in the pursuit of things that make them feel happy, we look to many different ways and to many different things, hence why there's 4,200 plus religions out here who live by different mantras, by different quotes. And in this pursuit of happiness, and in this pursuit of fulfillment and joy, all you need to do really is to go on to social media and there's endless amounts of people giving you quotes, right? I speak to a lot of young men um, in this city. And when you speak to young men, a lot, of, a lot of them go, yeah, like I live by this and my success looks like this and I want to just get here and then I'll be okay. And then we find quotes and wisdom and ideologies are fit that bias 
and these guys that I speak to, we like the wisdom of men. The wisdom of men. Young guys these days, you know, and I'm not saying all the things that these people I'm going to mention is false, but I'm not just saying, it's like, God bless you, all right. It's not pointing to the truth. See, a lot of these guys come round and they say, all right, preacher, tell me what you think about Andrew Tate. Well, I'm not here to preach Andrew Tate. They tell me, well, what do you think about um, Joe Rogan? Is Joe Rogan telling the truth? Sometimes Joe Rogan has good conversations, but I'm not here preaching Joe Rogan. They say some wise things, they say some absolutely ridiculous things. I hope that. They talk about, what's he called? David Goggins? David Goggins, is that who he is? The guy who just runs forever? He was a bit overweight one day, he was chubby, then one day he changed his mind. Then he just started running, and then he gives all these young men like advice. Look, you're the boss. You need to change your mindset, you need to do this, you need to do that. Look, don't be weak, don't be weak-minded. All of these sort of stuff, right? And listen, some of the stuff is true, but he doesn't point to the truth. And then there's another guy, Jordan Peterson, right? Now, Jordan Peterson's a funny one, because he says some stuff that's true. And what this guy does, he can see his journey, and he's gone from saying there is no God, being atheistic, to actually coming to the point of going, well, there is a God. But Jordan Peterson, people like him because he doesn't say, you must follow Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He tells you of a type of Christ, a type of God, and most people are okay with that. It's not straight down the line. It's not straight down the line. It doesn't point wholly to the truth. So in the pursuit of happiness, it doesn't get to the core, to the pursuit of what is right in our lives, who we are, why we're broken, why we're lost. He doesn't get there, but it scratches an itch. It's anything but Jesus, yeah? Listen, if I could give you a quote, right? And I could say, bro, who wrote that? And they would say, if I said, if I, what's happening, you're right. If I said Denzel Washington said it, people would say, oh, amazing, how wise is Denzel? Wonderful. If I give you another bit of scripture and said, oh, who wrote this? Because that really shook you to the core. It was lovely. It really challenged me. I'm going to take that with me. I'm probably going to put it on the wall in the front room. Who said it? Oh, it was Jim Carrey. Oh, how wonderful. How wise is Jim Carrey? But when I give you a scripture and it shakes you to the very core of who you are, it's the truth. It's challenging, but it's true. And you go, wow, preacher, what you've just said there, that, that's it. I need that in my life. I'm going to live by that. And you say, okay, do you want to know who it was? Jesus Christ said that. Oh, don't force your religion on me. I don't want Jesus Christ. I don't. See, it's anything but Jesus. We don't want the truth. We're okay if it's half truth. We're okay if it feels nice. But my question is to, to, to you guys, do you really, really, really want to know what the truth is. The Bible says this, you know. God bless you. God bless you. The Bible says this, bro. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. See, a lot of brothers walk up and down the street here. Yeah, they want to come to the preacher and drop wisdom game. They want to drop game. They want to drop knowledge, yeah? And they, they put it on the profiles. They drop it everywhere. They're dropping wisdom. Rappers like to drop wisdom. <laughs> but then James in the Bible writes this, right? He says there's four types of wisdom. You've got to get the right one. There's four types of wisdom that we can attain. We've got the earthly stuff. We've got the earthly stuff. We've got the intellectual stuff. Sounds good, right? Makes you think. Then we've got the stuff that comes from the devil himself, that lies and the deceit, that takes you away from where you're supposed to be. And then you've got the stuff that comes from God, the real deal of wisdom, right? So you've got earthly wisdom, you've got intellectual wisdom, You've got the wisdom that comes from Satan himself. And then you have the wisdom that comes from God Almighty. When the Bible says get wisdom, it's talking about the stuff from heaven. But the issue is this, right? The carnal mind, the mind of the flesh, the unregenerate mind, the one who's dead in spirit, can't comprehend it. It can't comprehend it. We need to get right with God to get God's wisdom. And the wisest man in the world, far wiser than Einstein and far wiser than Jordan Peterson and Joe Rogan and Goggins and whoever else you want to bring forth, the wisest man in the world, bro, do you know who it was? King Solomon. King Solomon 
was David's, King David, its son. When King Solomon was to take the throne after his, after his dad, David, right? God said to him, he says, look, Solomon, your dad was faithful. I've got a promise between him and I. Whatever you want, I'm going to give you, right? You know what Solomon asked for? Wisdom. Wisdom. He says, Lord, I love you. I want to serve you right. I'm going to ask for wisdom. And the Lord blessed him with wisdom, man. He poured wisdom out on this man. People came far and wide to hear the wisdom of Solomon, right? He was wise. Like these women, I mean, so, I'm not going to go into all of the accounts of what Solomon did and wisdom and all that sort of stuff, but he was wise. Solomon was the man when it came to wisdom. Even in all of his wisdom, even in all of the, the knowledge that Solomon could drop and the problems that he could solve, the truth of the matter is this. Solomon, in all of his wisdom and beauty, could never match that of a beautiful flower. He could never create something of such intricacy and beauty. But God did and God does. And even in the, the wisdom and the intellect that comes from science and man, two types of wisdom, yeah? From man, we've never ever next to Nilo did, have we? We've never took nothing and nothing and put it together and made something. We just haven't done it. And in all of his wisdom and all of the stuff that Solomon did, and even science, not yet have we ever solved the problem of death. We can't do it. You might be able to take all of your anti-aging creams and make yourself look fresh. You can't turn back the time. You can't turn back the clock. What is going to happen to each and every single one of us if we like to admit it or not? We're going to pass away. No wisdom of man. No wisdom of the earth, of earth, of man, or of Satan can solve the problem of death. But God did. And God does. And I talked a lot about Solomon, I talked about his wisdom, and I talked about how, you know, how he loved the Lord. But there's an issue with humanity, and there's an issue with Solomon, because Solomon was just a man. And you know what Solomon did? He sinned. He sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God, and all need a saviour. Solomon was wise, but he sinned. And you know what Solomon's sin, sin was, bro? Solomon loved women. Solomon loved women. He loved them from that area. He loved them from that area. He loved them from that area. Solomon liked to taste the world and he did it through women. And we know what the Bible says about that. He sinned. He fell short of the glory. And he was a wise man. But what this shows us, it shows us that although Solomon's wisdom was incomparable, his faith was inconsistent. And it's not wisdom and it's not intellect that pleases God, although God loves wisdom and God loves intellect. It's not that that predominantly pleases God. What is it that pleases God? The righteous shall live by faith. Without faith it's impossible to please God, right? See, this is what we need. True wisdom. Catch this. This is, this is it, right? True wisdom, much like God's grace, cannot be fully comprehended by the carnal man. It cannot be caught up, you cannot get it without the movement of the Holy Spirit. If you are dead in spirit, you're not going to get it. You're not going to catch it. You're not going to understand it. But it's when the Holy Spirit moves and the Holy Spirit moves and power in your life, when you move from death to life through faith in Christ, God bless you, brother, through Christ, it is then, it is then we start to see things clearly. You know, Corinthians tells us, yeah, where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the great debater? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. And it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For the Jews were later demanded a sign, and the Greeks were later wanted wisdom. But us, we, we preach Christ and Christ crucified. Christ and Christ crucified. To the Jews and to the folly of the Gentiles, but to those who are called, catch this, to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Christ is the power and the wisdom of God, and the foolishness of God is far wiser than men. And the weakness of God is far stronger than the strength of men. So what I'm saying to you here, guys, today is, you want wisdom? You want fulfillment, you want truth, you want to know that peace and that joy, God did that. 
and God did that through Jesus Christ. The face of the invisible God stepped down from heaven on a rescue mission for your soul. And the truth is, if you want it, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Not just Solomon. Not just Solomon. And the Bible says, get wisdom. Jesus said there was a wise man and a fool. Both of them set out to build the houses. And the fool, well, he decided that he was going to build his house on the, on the sand. And he, and he started just putting his foundations down in the sand, right? And then the storm came. And then the wind came. And what happened to his house? It was, there was no foundations. It was on the wrong, the wrong stuff. And it fell down and his life went down the pan. It was finished. And then the wise man, he set out to build his house. And the wise man was wise. It's in the name. And he built his house upon the solid rock, the solid foundation, unmovable, unshakable. And when the storm came, and the problems came, and the wind and the rain were lashed against the side of his house, it was unshaken. It stood there solid, unshaken. So watch Jesus saying here, he says, this is the word of God. It is solid, and when you build your life on this, when you listen to it, when you do it, like the wise man, wisdom, he will stand in the midst of the storms. You will stand in this life and you'll stand in the next life because you'll be in Christ. The issue is this, the wrath of God is coming against all unrighteousness, but the heart of God is saying to you, look, son, daughter, people in the streets, I love you. I love you. My grace is extended to you, but the wisdom of God looks like foolishness to, to those who are heading to destruction. It's simple, but it's true. It's simple, but it's true. And I want to tell you this, guys, that Jordan Peterson isn't going to save you. Joe Rogan isn't going to save you. Andrew Tate isn't going to save you. All of these people are not going to save you. And they can skirt, skirt around Christ, but what we need is Christ. We need a savior. We need the one true living God. We need the great I am. And we're here today preaching, not the wisdom of man, not the doctrine of devils, there's plenty of that on the streets here today. But preaching the simple gospel that all of us have fallen short of the glory of God, we've sinned, whatever that looks like. But by the grace and love of God, His mercy is towards each and every single one of us today. If you want to live a life, this is me closing up here. If you want to be wise, the wisest thing that you can do today and every other day to turn your eyes to Jesus, to fall upon the mercies of God, to seek him, and when you seek him, you shall find him. Because you can live your life with trying to get your money up in the bank. You can live your life trying to be the greatest philosopher, stoic philosophy, whatever. Amen, God bless you, brother. You can live your life trying to, to be the biggest playboy, but it's foolish. You've got to live your life God bless you, sister. Are you all right? To run towards the goal of well done, good and faithful servant. And that's what we will hear when we're in Christ, when we listen to the word and we do the word. That's what we need. We need a saviour. Well done, good and faithful servant. Not well done, good and faithful entrepreneur. Not well done, good and faithful viral TikTok star. Well done, good and faithful whatever. Well done good and faithful servant. When you seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, it's going to make straight your path. All things are going to be added. So no matter where you are today, if you're in the pit or if you think you're in the palace, Jesus is the answer. And we stand here today, not good in our own strength, not better than anybody else, but in Christ you're better off. It's the only way, the truth in the life. And listen, don't just take my word for it. Search it. Don't just believe what I'm saying. Find out for yourself. But the worst thing you can do, boys, is be indifferent. God bless you. God keep you. May his face shine upon you. Now and always.